hello viewers and welcome to my channel uh, today's topic is pseudo gout uh, but before starting i would like to request you like subscribe and share these videos to support this channel and if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com uh, now i come to the topic pseudo gout uh, before starting we need to about the disease, uh, causes and the symptoms and all that stuff we need to know what is pseudo gout well you know the pseudo gout is also known as the calcium phosphate uh, deposition and disease and uh, it's a type of arthritis that can cause spontaneous and the painful swelling in the joints it occurs when the crystals form in the synovial fluid and the uh, synovial fluid is uh, the lubricant that's uh, naturally present in the joints you know and its function is to decrease the friction uh, this causes inflammation and pain and this condition most commonly affects the knees uh, but it can also affect the ankles elbows and the wrists as well so the symptoms can uh, last uh, from the few days to several weeks and it's more common in older adults uh, well you cannot prevent this disease uh, but there are the treatments that can reduce the inflammation and they can relieve the pain you know now the next thing is uh, what are the causes of uh, uh, pseudo gout uh, gout occurs when uh, 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 the calcium phosphate crystals form in the synovial fluid in the joints and the crystals can also deposit in the cartilage where they can cause damage so back off uh, uh, like a build up of the like uh, a crystal in the joint fluid results in the like swollen joints and acute pain uh, now the scientists don't fully understand why these crystals form and the chance of uh, them forming likely increase with the age so there is a link between the pseudogout and the age and pseudogout can often run in families so there may be uh, many medical professionals you know they believe that uh, uh, it can be genetic condition and uh, uh, there are some uh, like contributing factors you know that may include like uh, hypothyroidism which means the underactive thyroid uh, excess iron uh, magnesium deficiency uh, overactive uh, parathyroid gland uh, hypercalcemia which mean, means too much calcium in the blood you know and uh, so these are the contributing factors now the next thing is what are the symptoms you know the pseudogout most often affects the knees but it can also affect the ankle the wrists and the elbows and the general symptoms may include uh, uh, bouts of joint pain swelling of affected joint uh, fluid built up around the joint uh, chronic arthritis uh, these are the uh, common symptoms uh, the next thing is about the diagnosis you know if your doctor thinks that you have the pseudogout uh, they may recommend uh, the tests like uh, analysis of the joint fluids to look for any calcium phosphate crystals x-rays of the joints uh, to check for any damage to the joint and uh, calcification which means the calcium buildup of the cartilage and the deposits of the calcium in the joint cavities so they will uh, advise the x-rays now looking at the crystals uh, found in the joint cavities helps your doctor to make diagnosis so this condition shares the symptoms with the other problems so sometimes it may be misdiagnosed as like osteoarthritis uh, or maybe rheumatoid arthritis or maybe the gouty arthritis which is a disorder causing the painful inflammation of the toes and the feet so pseudo gout can sometimes be associated with the other illnesses like uh, hemophilia or maybe uh, echinosis you know which is a, a condition causing the deposit of the dark pigment in the cartilage and the other connective tissues and uh, amyloidosis you know which means an abnormal build up of protein in the tissues so um, maybe hypothyroidism and uh, hyperthyroidism uh, so uh, it can be misdiagnosed uh, sometimes 
Now, once diagnosed, then uh, what are the treatment options? You know, your doctor may uh, drain that sy uh, synovial fluid from the joint, and the purpose of this drainage is to relieve the pressure within the joint and to reduce the inflammation. Now, to help with the acute attacks, your doctor may prescribe non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. Uh, which are known as uh, NSAIDs and uh, these are available uh, over the counter, you know. Uh, and the purpose of these medications is just to reduce the swelling and to relieve the pain. And, uh, uh, but in certain cases, uh, you may not be able to take these uh, medications. Uh, for example, if uh, you are taking the blood thinning medication such as uh, aspirin, etc., you know, and uh, you have the poor kidney function or you have a history of the stomach ulcer. So in that case, uh, these are not the suitable medications for you. And uh, to help to reduce the risk of additional flare-ups, your doctor may prescribe low doses of the, um, uh, like, uh, 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 Cochrane's, you know, so, or the, maybe NSAIDs, you know. And other medications uh, may include uh, like Plaquenil or Chloroquine, which is the drugs used for the malaria. Uh, Traxil, which is uh, Methotrexate, and uh, maybe Anakinora, you know. So these are the other medications which can be prescribed by your doctor. And if your joints are wearing out, your doctor may recommend surgery to repair and replace them. So there's currently no treatment available to cure their one, but the treatments are available to relieve the symptoms. Now, you know, the next thing is about the complications. The most people, they are able to manage the symptoms very well with the treatment. And in some cases, the crystal deposits uh, in the synovial fluid can lead to permanent joint damage and the joints that we have uh, which has been affected by the pseudocort can eventually develop bone spurs. Um, so bone spurs are the growths that stick out of the bones and due to excessive friction, cysts or maybe loss of cartilage. So in that case you may need surgery. Well there is no way to prevent it and uh, treating the underlying cause can decrease the risk of developing. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. Thank you.